Hello and welcome to Raptor Talk. We are here today with Health Secretary Francisco Duque III to talk about the state of health in the Philippines, from vaccination to the universal health care law which will be implemented by next year. Hello Secretary, welcome to Raptor Talk. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Janelle, and thank you also for this opportunity in behalf of the Department of Health. Okay, so let's dive right into it. Um, you said yesterday that uh, the, vac the catch of vaccination for polio was, uh, it, it went pretty well. So you reached 95.4% of the target. Um, I was wondering about, how about the kids who weren't vaccinated? Do you have any idea why they weren't vaccinated? What could be the underlying reasons? Well, first of all, uh, in general, we did hit our target of 90, mm -hmm. it, it's 96%, 95.56%. Mm -hmm. But there are areas, about seven areas in uh, Lanao del Sur, mm -hmm. where the coverage uh, is still low, you know, 21% to less than 60%. You know, Dato, Dato Dumalundong, uh, Binayawan, Pagayawan, I can give you the list. So mm, these okay. are places where we need to do map-up operations. Mm, okay. In other words, we need to go back to these areas mm -hmm. and convince the mothers, yeah. Yeah. for whatever reasons, to have their child covered mm -hmm. uh, with uh, oral polio vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have identified them. The correct terminology is map up, mapping map up, up operation. Operations. Yeah. So that's what they are going to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, we hope to be able to cover them. These are Jida areas, by the way. Okay. No? Okay. So, so uh, Lano del Sur particularly. In eh, particular. Dun pa po nakita yung first case ng polio. Yes. Right? So, yes. Yeah. Uh, Marugong uh, had a pretty good coverage, naman. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Kasi ya, yeah, siya pa inupisan na yan. Mm -hmm. oh, so uh, by and large, we are quite uh, pleased with mm -hmm. the results mm -hmm. but of course the trouble is the six or seven LGUs mm -hmm. or communities with really still very low coverage 21 mm -hmm. and you know the outbreaks can that could serve as a needles for outbreaks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, the good turnout about 20 uh, 95 um, point something percent um, why what do you think pushed parents to get their kids vaccinated was it fear or, or of some it's sort? a combination of fear uh, effective communication mm -hmm. uh, strategy, uh, the commitment of the health workers mm -hmm. who really shared with the DOH the value of having children immunized uh, as the most effective public health, not only is it a public health policy, but a public health definitive intervention to protect the children. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so it's a manifold of uh, factors. So uh, the effective communication strategy, because you know we've been running this mm -hmm. polio yes. campaign, and it's then uh, you know yeah. the very strong support uh, of the civil society, oh, yes. non-governmental organization mm -hmm. in particular, uh, the Philippine Red Cross. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and then the. Uh, Rotary International, mm -hmm. okay, and then the local government units, uh, of course, the health workers, which uh, had a big, uh, substantial role mm -hmm. in the successful uh, campaign, mm. leading all the way to a uh, more than 95% coverage. Mm -hmm. So that's quite a success rate. Mm -hmm. Um, so, sec, two of the three cases confirmed so far, both from Mindanao. Um, why is that so? Like, wh are, why is this uh, a pattern? I think one of the samples being confirmed right now is also from Mindanao. So, why is there this concentration there? Um, why do you think? Again, it's a combination of factors. Number one, the poor, uh, in general, the environmental uh, sanitation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, leaves uh, so much room for improvement. Personal hygiene, of course, is uh, could be a consequence of, mm -hmm. of, of that, uh, and then uh, relatively low uh, vaccine coverage, mm. and then uh, a much more improved surveillance of mm. acute flaccid paralysis. Oh, yes. 
So I think that the reason why we're discovering all of this is also because we've leveled up the surveillance mm. uh, capability mm. of uh, the DOH. Mm. Because, uh, and it is not without basis, because the WHO had supported in 2017 capacity building mm. for RITM and related uh, mm. surveillance uh, units of the DOH, national and regional, uh, to really uh, level up their yes. capability for doing environmental mm -hmm. uh, sampling, which you know a lot. Some of these really turned out positive, positive yeah. from the environmental isolates of uh, vaccine-derived mm -hmm. poliovirus, mm -hmm. uh, in type two in particular. No, so uh, that is the reason. Okay, One so of the reasons. You mentioned po uh, in 2017, yung capacity building was boosted. Yan yan. Um, pero before Puba, do you have any idea kung poor, it was it it was poor? Poor surveillance. So do you think we could, we would have detected siguro cases then if yes, we had I'm sure. surveillance? If okay. we had the same capability now mm. as before prior to 2017, I'm sure mm -hmm. we would have uh, picked up. We would have uh, really isolated uh, mm -hmm. cases, whether environmental or individual, mm -hmm. uh, isolates testing positive. Since the, the two cases now are from Mindanao, has the president expressed you know, directly to you his, ano, his worry that, that these are cases happening to, to uh, kids in Mindanao particularly? Nothing, not yet. Not man. yet, uh, because I keep uh, reporting to him mm. what uh, we are doing, what we have accomplished. So I think uh, to a certain degree, he's uh, more or less confident mm. that the DOH is doing its job mm -hmm. uh, very well. Mm -hmm. Okay, Paul. Uh, so you mentioned one of the other, one of the factors you always mentioned one of the factors that cause the return of polio is low vaccine coverage. Um, this in this year's vaccination campaigns, um, were there still remnants of the dengue vaccine scare? Because that's one of the reasons cited by say the um, London School of Hygiene and, and Tropical Medicine, right? Yeah. The the plunge in numbers from 2015 to 2018. Uh, may remnants pa po ba ng Dimavaxia scare in this year's vaccination campaigns? Remnants siguro meron pa. Yeah. But uh, I think the parents now and mothers have uh, started to realize the very bad consequences mm -hmm. of uh, not having their children immunized. Mm -hmm. So. I think it's becoming more and more evident to them. Mm -hmm. And that is why uh, slowly but surely we're able to recu mm -hmm. recover uh, what used to be a very good level of trust and mm -hmm. confidence in the government's immunization program. Mm -hmm. um, so that, uh, the Dengvaxia scare, that issue really yeah. caused like a, like a public uh, uproar, right? So how would the DOH prevent another one from happening? What well, we have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. We have to veer, we shouldn't be imprudent. Mm. You know, the thing is, as what DOH has done before, whenever there's a new health you know, product, a new medicine, a new vaccine, we always uh, took uh, the more conservative uh, path, uh, which, which means that, you know, let others try it first. Let mm. other countries mm -mm. Uh, do it first. Rather than we uh, doing it first, uh, gung ho and very, you know, uh, very risky mm -mm. of that. So I wouldn't want that to happen mm -mm. again. Mm -mm. So I hope that the lessons learned from the Deng Baksha controversy uh, must, uh, must be really internalized and it shouldn't happen again mm -mm. because the collateral damage is just too much to bear mm -mm. and who bears it children mm -mm. Yes. you know so uh, dying mm -mm. of uh, vaccine preventable diseases like measles mm -mm. the measles uh, coverage in just about five months improved by the way to 98 percent mm -mm. uh, <clears throat> in the first cohort of uh, uh, six to 59 months of age no? uh, so that's a pretty good uh, indication of the beginning, uh, you know, the, the, the restored trust and confidence of mothers. Mm -mm. But again, the school base, it's only 25% yes. now because we had to stop so mm. many of our school base uh, immunization activities, mm -mm. largely because of dengue. You mm -mm. know, we were trying to manage dengue because mm -mm. of the 
this year is really terrible. Yes. I mean, you know, uh, it uh, breached the 300,000 mm. uh, uh, mark. Okay. And then, of course, the, the polio mm, uh, the declaration of yes. outbreak. So, but uh, the supplemental immunization activities uh, for the school-based immunization uh, will continue. Continue. Yes. So until when, Paul? Because the first uh, deadline was supposed to be around September, September right? Yes. So until end of the school year, by uh, It might have to be up to the end of the school year okay. because I don't think that we can do it by by December. The December. Yeah. Yes. At, uh, uh, at because we're going to na naman, mga bata, ah, yes. di ba? Oh, Sam break sila. Mm -hmm. And then few weeks, uh, Christmas, break na naman Christmas break. So yeah. uh, I uh, don't think we will be able to reach our target by end of December. Mm -hmm. But it's not end of school year. Mm -hmm. So you have these, uh, so you these health problems left and right. Um, since you served before as health secretary as well, um, how would you compare your work then, your time then as health secretary and now? Uh, it's a, not really different, okay. know, but uh, I would say this is more difficult now mm -hmm. for very clear reasons. Number one, you know, the Deng Baksha controversy uh, mm, really yes. uh, was a very difficult, and up to now, you know, we're still managing it. You know? The uh, aftermath or the, uh, the after effects. No? And then number two, the huge budget of the DOH without uh, the DOH absorptive capacity uh, improving at the rate of uh, the budget increases it mm. has DOH has been having since 2014. So, so we need to fix the organizational capacity so as to be able to uh, spend this uh, increased uh, budget mm -mm. of uh, the DOH. Mm -mm. So, uh, and then, but in terms of uh, emergencies, in terms of uh, epidemics, um, it's basically the same as mm. uh, when I was uh, first time Secretary of mm -hmm. Health. So do you have to combat with um, parang new problems? For example, I think now, um, especially when you go online, and damning misinformation and disinformation. Oh, yeah, that's do you have to combat with that? It's a, it's a problem. It's a, it's a dilemma. Mm. Uh, that we need to manage mm -hmm. because of uh, a more uh, developed social media platforms and then these being used to peddle false information uh, you know personal opinions are being peddled as Fact. you know truths mm -hmm. and so this obviously contributed to mm -hmm. a very low uh, trust and confidence mm -hmm. in our immunization program mm -hmm. you know the anti-boxers all of a sudden they have voices to be heard mm -mm. you know they're peddled in the social media mm -mm. and it's very it is quite uh, regrettable that this thing is uh, going on you know the streams of uh, uh, the information uh, highway in mm -mm. particular the social media so that's something that we also need to counter mm -mm. because we need to inform uh, the truth about our public health programs. Mm -hmm. And more so now that the UHC uh, implementation is uh, about to start, that's January of next year. So, mahirap talaga. So, ang tanong doon, mas mahirap ngayon. Mm -mm. Mas maraming challenges ngayon. Not like the first time. But I had more pandemics, you know, I had a pandemic during my first time, yeah. uh, you know, the H1N1 yes. pandemic. Yes. I had the mel melamine uh, scare, mm, you sagatas, yes. you remember that, right? Yes, I remember. That was also, uh, wow. Oh, uh, yeah. oh, you, you must have been uh, a kid then, Probably you know? in oh, grade school. In 2007, <laughs> 2007. Yeah. Grade school. <laughs> yeah, and then we had the rest on Ebola virus, mm, the hugs. Yes, we yes. managed very well. Mm -mm. Uh, the DOH uh, took over <laughs> the <laughs> management of that uh, problem. Crisis. Yeah. So we called 30,000 uh, mm -hmm. pigs, mm -hmm. but we saved a, uh, a multi-billion peso mm -hmm. hog industry mm -hmm. from going under. Yes. So, um, and then we had all these uh, huge, uh, you know, natural disasters mm -hmm. uh, and also man-made disasters, you know, like the, like the, 
and the princess, mm, the princess ship Paris. that capsized off yes. the shore of mm. uh, Roblon. Mm -mm. And then they had so many endosulfan mm -mm. Uh, chemicals. And then it was in the capsized uh, uh, ship, the sunk ship. Mm -hmm. So we had to manage all of that. Mm -hmm. Then we had the Guimaras oil spill. Yes. That was also terrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, several uh, local uh, communities and its people mm -hmm. uh, were affected because of the Guimaras uh, oil spill. Mm -hmm. So, there are other challenges. Yes. So, but, but then my budget was only what? Like 11, 12 billion. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. what? 100. Yeah. In 2014, post syntax implementation, choo, yeah. budget went up. But as the budget went up, the capacities did not improve. Mm -mm. Parang we were running still on a 10, 11 billion budget, mm. and all of a sudden the budget just uh, zoomed mm -mm. up. No? So, you know, yeah. you know, the dilemma. Ngayon. So before we go to talks on you know universal healthcare and the budget, yeah. um, I'd like to ask then, uh, how is how is it different working with you know the the two presidents you've served under? Parang uh, are they both asset or how how different or is their involvement in health policy, for example? You're talking about uh, the Duterte presidency. Uh, both. Um, you can talk about uh, the Arroyo GMA presidency, presidency first, and then the. Well, I would say uh, the president. Uh, Arroyo, uh, Makapagan Arroyo, uh, knew a lot, I mean, made sure that she was more aware, perhaps, of the nitty gritty mm. of uh, issues, mm -hmm. uh, health, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, otherwise. So, yun lang, yung management style, siguro, I mm. would say. Okay. See, President Duterte is more, you know, you're the head. You, I, more trust. Yeah, oh, I uh, trust in you. Mm -mm. Uh, I have my trust in you. Mm -mm. Uh, so you just have to do your job as mm -hmm. best as you can. Just mm -hmm. give me the results. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, iba, siyempre, mas meticulous. Mm -hmm. In general, that's mm -hmm. the rule. Mm -hmm. Women leaders are, uh, and uh, in, 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 uh, uh, more often than not, they're more meticulous. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, sec. So, w which can be very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Especially for governance, I guess. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, sec, um, uh, President Duterte's main policy for health chamber is universal health care. Um, you know, President Duterte is the only president, I would say, who really uh, rallied his uh, allies in Congress mm -hmm. to pass the UHC bill mm -hmm. into law mm -hmm. and uh, he exercised sheer political will to rally behind his allies which ultimately uh, resulted into a multi-partisan support mm -hmm. for the uh, yes. passage of the, uh, for the approval of the bill. Yes. So UHC is a very comprehensive law. So there's a lot about it to to get into. To Many moving parts, so to yes. speak. Yeah. So you need to orchestrate it mm -hmm. in such a way that uh, you have to know what each sector, what each stakeholder mm -mm. Uh, has to contribute, yeah. and how to guide each one of uh, the uh, players or mm -hmm. the stakeholders, mm -hmm. no? uh, and the sector in general. Mm -hmm. So we are. We have signed the IRR, mm -hmm. and yes. that will be the uh, basis for orchestrating the universal healthcare law implementation, which again, as I have said earlier, has many moving parts. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. okay so, so we need synchrony. Mm -hmm. We need harmony, synchrony, mm -hmm. until we get the right tune mm -hmm. of UHC. Shempre, when, when UHC was being uh, discussed in the budget hearings, ang usapan is budget. Um, then, parang maraming criticism na, ay, na masyadong malaki yung naslash sa budget ng DOH. Um, have you talked with Congress about realignments na, and, and, and there are there realignments that are favorable to certain programs? Like, for example, yung human resources for health deployment, um, na ayos po ba yun? Well, we just uh, had a meeting the other day with the, the DBM uh, officials. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the National Expenditure Plan, there is 2.4 billion, but this is only going to support the operations, uh, cost of operations, uh, 
uh, of the deployment and also the scholarship uh, mm. cost. Mm -mm. Uh, we need 16 billion to be able to sustain the 26,000 human uh, resource for health professionals under the DOH deployment program. So uh, they have agreed they'll get the 7 billion from the miscellaneous personal mm. benefit fund and then another 9.2 billion uh, from, uh, I think it will also come from the MPBF, the, mm. pers uh, the uh, miscellaneous personal benefit fund. Mm -hmm. So more or less we were given the assurance that that mm. will continue the 26,000 HRH uh, deployment uh, program uh, uh, will uh, benefit the mm -hmm. local government uh, units mm -hmm. to complement their own uh, human resource uh, capacity. So that's at least uh, they gave us the reassurance. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're happy that uh, we're going to get it back. Mm -mm. Okay, Sarc. so next year right, is the first year of implementation of, of universal healthcare, and it will be implemented in 33 integration sites. Um, I think during during consultations for you know, crafting the IRR, um, there were a few LGUs that were pretty resistant to the idea of integrating um, UHC into their system. Uh, Yung, yung resistance po na yun, um, do you think the DOH would ever seek the help of, say, DILG to compel um, LGU such as these to, to, to cooperate in, in this policy of the administration? Well, yes. Uh, we will have to do everything to uh, persuade mm -mm. Uh, these resistant LGUs mm -mm. Uh, resisting integration. Uh, at the provincial level. Uh, but again, I think the resistance is more on account of lack of sufficient understanding mm. and knowledge of, of the law mm -mm. and the IRR. But mm -mm. as soon as all of this uh, is in place, they'll probably realize uh, the benefits. Mm -mm. Uh, there are far more benefits mm -mm. to be derived from an integration. Mm -mm not just politically but more important mm -hmm. socially mm -hmm. to their constituents the mm -hmm. impact on the constituents mm -hmm. of these uh, usually mga mayor siya na may ayaw eh. yes they're giving up you know uh, power, power yeah. you know their supervision control of their health uh, delivery units mm -hmm. so from the barangay health station to their rural health units mm -hmm. or uh, city health centers mm -hmm. Because the rest naman, talagang inherent to the governor naman yung supervision and mm. management of the uh, provincial hospitals, mm -hmm. levels one and two. Mm -mm. Yeah. So, one... So we just uh, need to convince them. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah. You've mentioned before that you're open to renationalizing this idea of renationalizing healthcare since now it's devolved. Are you still open to that idea? Well, selective renationalization should be okay. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't touch... Uh, LGUs that have shown uh, measurable uh, successes mm -hmm. or success mm -hmm. in terms of running, operating their own health system, mm -hmm. mm, success of which is measured in terms of better, you know, maternal care, mm. uh, reflected in much lower maternal mortality rate, maternal mm. morbidity rate, mm -hmm. uh, infant mortality, mm -hmm. child under five. Uh, neonatal mortality, etc. No, so or TB burden. So all of these are metrics or yes, indicators yes. that more or less will show mm -hmm. whether the local health system is indeed working mm -mm. effectively or not. Mm -hmm. Which LGUs are these? You think? Can you well, you know the poor LGUs, maramian. You know mm -hmm. th those classified as uh, as uh, with income classification. Fourth, fifth, sixth class municipalities. Yan ang mga, mga problema. Yan yung mga uh, maraming reklamo na kulang sa gamot, kulang sa tao, mm -hmm. uh, decrepit yung lugar, dilapidated yung mga uh, gosali. No? So, yan yung mga tingin ko dapat marinationalize. Mm -hmm. So that the DOH can plan better, there's unified command, 
there's clarity of vision, there's better execution. Because now, you know, the LGUs, especially if the local chief executives, I, I am not uh, mm. generalizing. Mm -mm. There are uh, some of them who do not prioritize mm -mm. Uh, health programs and so their constituents suffer. Mm -mm. And we cannot allow that. Mm -mm. And their politics involved. Yeah. In but course. for those good ones, we should let them operate, let mm -mm. to continue to operate. And they could be models for UHD then? Yes. yes. Indeed, mm -mm. they have been models mm -mm. for uh, UHC, for uh, both the service delivery side, the supply side, as well as the demand side, mm -mm. you know, in terms of uh, consistently high field health coverage, mm -mm. which is the major funder or financier of the uh, health system. Mm -mm. Okay, so a main feature of UHC as well is um, getting people to shift to primary health care rather than you know immediately uh, approaching specialists yeah, yeah. how Actually. in in very simple terms how can we explain this to people because i feel i feel na baka maliit nga, you also mentioned maliit yung understanding la with what uhc really means so what does it mean to shift to primary health care well uh, the the shifting is meant to in practical terms no decongest our hospitals mm -hmm. okay it's very operational uh, in the sense that when the culture when the health seeking behavior of people uh, is more or less geared towards specialty hospital care mm -hmm. even for minor mm -hmm. conditions or illnesses then you're gonna have a lot of traffic in your uh, hospitals no? you're gonna see uh, hallways with you know jam packed with patients, mm -mm. you know, children, and that's not good. Mm -mm. We need to manage them at the lower foundational mm -hmm. uh, uh, health facilities. Mm -hmm. Okay, Zach, now that we're on the topic of hospitals, no, um, I think recently uh, a group of private hospitals um, told the PhilHealth that they would you know, just not choose to get accredited again um, mm -hmm. because of uh, yung unpaid reimbursements. Uh, what do you think about that? Should should hos should should private hospitals be threatening? Um, they should then. Yeah. Because you know you cannot turn your back, uh, mm -mm. shut the doors to mm -mm. patients. Because number one, you're a doctor, mm -mm. Right? so mm -mm. you have your Hippocrates oath. Mm -hmm. right? So, but anyway, that has been solved okay. by uh, Senator Bongo, who mm -hmm. bridged uh, the field health uh, and the. Private Hospital Association of the Philippines, mm -mm. there is a uh, commitment uh, on both sides to address the issue, to establish what are the receivables uh, due to the private hospitals. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And uh, on the one hand, and on the other hand, the PhilHealth will also not just pay without complete documentation mm -mm. or basis for releasing uh, funds of field health. Otherwise, the COA will run after them. Mm -hmm. So I think the receivables being uh, raised, the issue of receivables raised by uh, the Private Hospital Association of the Philippines uh, relate to receivables of 10, 15 years ago. Oh, na okay. wala na yun. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the more recent uh, receivables mm -hmm. uh, or or uh, reimbursements from Vila, it's uh, parang 96% nga eh. 90 to 96% ang, ang uh, reimbursement rate. In other words, of the uh, percentage of claims mm -hmm. submitted by the members of PHAP, PhilHealth is able to reimburse 96 of 100 claims. Mm, okay. Oh. So, isa pang issue with hospitals. Um, we already have a law that penalizes hospitals that you know turn away patients um, who seek help sa ER but can't pay. Um, has do you have an idea if this has empowered um, has empowered patients to actually you know use the law um, to against hospitals who turn them away because they can't pay? Yes, of okay. course. Uh, there's there's a law, and you can lose your accreditation with PhilHealth mm -hmm. if the emergency is 
there and you're not stabilizing the patient. Mm -mm. So that is really uh, for them to worry about if mm -mm. they violate that particular uh, provision. Mm -mm. Meron na po bang mga nare-reklamo na hospital sa... I'm sure meron na yan, okay. uh, but I just don't have the list. We can get the list okay. uh, with, uh, from the health regulatory yes. facilities uh, and uh, no, health Facility Services and Regulatory mm -hmm. Bureau mm -hmm. of the DOH. Mm -hmm. Okay, another law passed under this administration was the mental health law. Yes. So, what is the place of mental health in universal health care? How is it going to be improved? There's under a big this place okay. of mental health. It's uh, one of the uh, obvious deliverables under the UHC and also buttressed by the fact that there's a separate law on uh, mental, mental health. health. This yeah. is the Mental Health Act of 2018. So it's really capacity building, mm -hmm. uh, giving, expanding uh, services uh, for mental health uh, patients, mm, mm, community-based as well community as hospital-based uh, uh, care for the more uh, serious cases. Mm -hmm. But by and large, it's really a lot of capacity building mm -mm. Uh, and to be able to address head-on, uh, you know, cases of increasing incidence of depression, mm. of schizophrenia, yes. uh, and uh, all other uh, mental health problems. Mm -hmm. So it's a very good law and it's, uh, it's uh, a building block of mm -hmm. the universal mm -hmm. health care yeah. law. Uh, yes. It's a bit more mm -hmm. specific, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of it um, then uh, depends on the mindset of people. What, what do you say to people who say na you know people with mental health are loko loko ganyan or 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 parang depression sakit mayaman lang yan? Like how it's do really we doctor that ignorance. conception? Yeah. I think it's more of ignorance. So mm -hmm. we need to part of uh, the objectives of uh, mental health act or law is to level up even education uh, aspect, uh, information education, communications aspect mm -hmm. uh, of the law is to really drill down, you know, the causes of mental health problems, counseling, mm -hmm. uh, uh, testing, evaluation of the, the mental uh, status of uh, uh, anyone who comes with symptoms of uh, of mental health problems, so it's a very good law. In fact, I think the president again should be credited for seven major laws mm -hmm. that got uh, passed mm -hmm. and signed by him under his administration. So you have, of course, uh, the latest one, the universal health care law, which is the Magna the Carta of all yeah. laws. Then you have the uh, National Integrated Cancer Control Act, mm -hmm, yes. okay? Then you have the new HIV AIDS Policy mm -hmm. Act. Then you have the first 1,000 Days uh, yes. Nutrition Magnanay mm -hmm. Act. Then you have, uh, of course, the, uh, the Sugar Sweetened Beverage mm -hmm. uh, Tax mm -mm. Uh, Law. Mm -mm. And then uh, you have... Uh, uh, the disease mandatory disease notifiable yes. disease reporting act mm -hmm. so these are mm -mm. Uh, pieces of landmark mm -mm. legislation mm -mm. that i think credit must go mm -hmm. uh, to the president mm -hmm. for again sheer political will mm -mm. to get his allies in congress mm -mm. to uh, approve the bill mm -mm. Um, Sek, now that we're talking about the president, you know, as the doctor in the cabinet, does he consult you about his health? Not really. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's just when, like the other day, when I had the, uh, when I was with him with the, the and met a uh, group of businessmen from Shanghai, mm -hmm. the Nanjiang uh, Corporation, he was, uh, you know, he had sniffles, so he was blowing his nose. So I said, Mr. President, you might uh, need to take your rest. Because mm -mm. you seem to be uh, having uh, a very bad mm -mm. Uh, uh, cough and colds. Mm -mm. So yeah, he's taking antibiotic. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So that's about it. Mm -mm. But the way he, of course, I always uh, 
observe him you know with my clinical eyes i uh, can say he despite the report of his uh accident you know the motorcycle uh, accident he mm. had he was walking very upright you mm. know erect you know mm. so wala no problem okay but what do you think he should release you know medical bulletins like the no 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 i don't think there should mm. need to do that at mm -hmm. this point Really, but but he's but a he goes official. around. He's yeah. a very strong uh, physically because despite all the enumeration of his uh, mm -mm. health problems, mm -hmm. barrets, burgers, mm -hmm. you know, spine uh, injury, and daming di ba, daming sakit, uh, di mm -hmm. But he still does his job mm -hmm. quite uh, uh, quite well. Mm -hmm. He goes uh, to visit many places, mm -hmm. but oftentimes unannounced. Then eh? you know, mm -hmm. he just goes to the hospital mm -hmm. to visit to talk, to see the slain mm -hmm. uh, uh, soldiers mm -hmm. or police. Mm -hmm. oh, so, I don't know. Yeah, but, but at what point, siguro, sec, kailangan niyang mag-release ng medical bulletins? Think? Well, we leave it up to his good judgment mm -hmm. to do that. Okay. Um, so, uh, again, on the topic of the president, one of his, syempre, his, his um, main policies is the war on drugs. What, what is your response to the criticism that the DOH is not as involved as, as it should be in, in, in drug rehabilitation, for example. Um, and for example, um, in the budget hearing, I think Senator Go said, um, why not just put the budget for drug rehab to burial assistance? So, may <laughs> nagmaterialize po ba yung, yung ano yun? No, no, we have, uh, again, look at the metrics. Mm -hmm. How many more treatment rehabilitation centers are there? Mm -mm. Okay, so we're uh, poised to have one per region, mm -mm. and that's going to be realized pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if the DOH uh, is not uh, as involved, then there shouldn't this there shouldn't be this indication mm -mm. Uh, of involvement, mm -mm. if not a uh, solid engagement, you know, clear uh, engagement of the DOH. Mm -hmm. So we're 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 able to get our targets. So. Mm -mm. Uh, that's the human side to it, of course. You know, in demand side, uh, yung uh, sa amin naman yung care, yung rehabilitation, treatment, all the inputs to such mm -mm. will have to be uh, in place. Mm -hmm. In fact, we just uh, inaugurated, thanks to the Villar family, mm -mm. Uh, mm -hmm. so the Pinas. yeah the Las Pinas uh, Treatment Rehabilitation Center mm -mm. is very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, very well appointed, you know, very functional. Uh, so then prior to that, there have been several uh, TRCs we have inaugurated, the one in Bukidnon, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, the, uh, the establishment of this continues. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. Well, so the facilities are there, but are there enough people um, who will? Well, that's that's the next challenge, mm -hmm. and we are uh, we are uh, putting in place mm -hmm. part of our human resource uh, deployment program mm -hmm. touches on uh, this Drug particular issue: the inadequate uh, personnel, mm -hmm. human resource, mm -hmm. to run effectively and efficiently such facilities, mm -hmm. but. Uh, we are not unaware of this need. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Sec, for the remaining years of, of your time as Secretary, what other reforms or policies would you like to see? What other laws would you like to pass um, in terms of health in the Philippines? You know, if I had the choice, uh, tama na muna yung batas. Yeah, and dami. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so too many Kailangan laws. Pang yeah, we need more time to implement. I mm -hmm. think let's go yes. uh, implementation, uh, execution, uh, mm -hmm during this remaining uh, years of the Duterte administration. Because mm -hmm. it also takes time away from the DOH to do its job mm -hmm. if there are too many laws that we mm -hmm. need to constantly input our technical, you mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, the uh, consultative meetings, for yes. example, the mm -hmm. hearings, mm -hmm. That we have to prepare our people, you know, and somehow that also takes away time mm -mm. from execution mm -hmm. or implementation. Mm -hmm. So, ako nga, let's spend the remaining years uh, of uh, the Duterte administration in really seeing to it that these laws are being implemented mm -hmm. very well, very mm -hmm. effectively, and bringing about the desired uh, 
outcomes, mm -hmm. the health outcomes. Mm -hmm. no? So, mm -hmm. example is nutrition magnanay ah, yeah. We want to see a more substantive uh, reduction in the rate of stunting mm -hmm. in the Philippines. It's a problem. Yes, we have stunting. one of the highest rates of uh, stunting. Yung triple burden of malnutrition. Nga po, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. So, that, that's a problem. We need to see a 30% prevalence rate go down to say about uh, 25% mm -hmm. uh, and, and 20%, hopefully, uh, zero it out. Mm -hmm. uh, before the end of the term of the president mm -hmm. but you know that's a pretty ambitious uh, yes. <laughs> uh, goal yes. but uh, so we always need to because the laws are laws mm -hmm. they're just as good as when they're effectively implemented mm -hmm. it is of no value if the implementation is weak anemic and uh, you know lackadaisical mm -hmm. and so we really need to focus mm -hmm. on action mm -hmm. this time implementation Doon po ba sa laws na nabanggit nyo, meron po ba doon particularly nahihirapan ng DOH right now i-implement or? Well, of course, the resource-based uh, uh, laws will always be difficult because you don't have enough wherewithal to implement it effectively to get, you know, such wide, substantive, uh, substantial coverage. Mm -hmm. So... Yun. So, yung sa Nutrition Magnanay Act, that's something we have to uh, really closely monitor how it's being implemented mm. alongside the National Nutrition Council uh, and the LGUs. Pero yung problema, pagka talaga di mo, eh, mm. very patchy yung uh, work, mm. you know, dito yung ginagawa, ito yung ginagawa, yung wala talagang unified command. So, mahirap. It's mm -hmm. uh, quite a challenge. It already is difficult but even made more complicated mm -mm. by the fact that uh, the health has been devolved. Yeah. So, um, kamusta na po ba yung uh, talks nyo with, the con with people from Congress about, you know, the, about reviewing the, uh, the, the local government code to, to reassess how we... Reception is good. Okay. Reception is quite good. Mm -mm. So whether they actually sit down and uh, process mm -mm. the review, mm -hmm. uh, then that's okay. Mm -hmm. We'll be there to uh, support it. It's a selective renationalization mm, more okay. than a absolute uh, renationalization. Mm -hmm. And are we uh, eyeing a particular year when this will happen? Well, when that's a call of Congress eh? okay. because they have also other competing uh, uh, issues mm. that they need to resolve mm -mm. by passing the appropriate laws. Okay, Zach, to wrap things up, uh, what has been the most challenging thing about you know serving as Secretary of Health twice, and also what are the lessons you've learned so far that you know you will take um, for the next three years? Of you? Well, first I am able to say the myth that serving as Secretary of Health the second time around is a walk in the park. You mm. know, it's not true yeah. because every term has its new set of problems. Mm. So here we are. We're trying to fix a lot. Uh, uh, in the DOH in terms of uh, you know capacities in terms of expertise in terms of efficiency gains mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, uh, managing uh, the human resource of the entire uh, DOH bureaucracy the of course the financial constraints uh, let alone the emergencies mm -hmm. you know the epidemics so it's a fairly difficult job. Probably it's one of the most difficult uh, portfolios because you have debts, number one, you know. Then you have uh, enemies like the dengue, the uh, dengue carrying, you know, uh, the, the mosquitoes Those. carrying the, the, the virus. Mm -hmm. And it's not in yeah. Basila, yeah. it's not in Tawi Tawi. Yes. It's there, it's everywhere. just within your uh, environs. Mm. So, uh, a lot of really challenges, eh? mm -hmm. but you need a very strong organization, a well-oiled, cohesive mm -hmm. organization to be able to uh, run all of its programs and uh, really linking all these efforts to better health outcomes. In mm -hmm. the end, there will be more citizen endearment, uh, patient satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So we're watching all these uh, metrics as a reflection mm -hmm. of uh, how successful we're, we are mm -hmm. or uh, 
you know, how poorly we might be doing when the scores are down. Mm -hmm. So we just need to keep uh, moving the bar mm -hmm. higher uh, because this is appropriate because of the growing demands and expectations, increasing expectations, mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, increasingly complex demands mm -hmm. of the citizenry mm -hmm. because now they can report you, yeah. you know, they can take your camera, photo, your picture, yeah. if you're not doing well, if you're, mm -hmm. the, yes. the, the, everybody's become very opinionated, mm -hmm. everybody's so empowered, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, that is uh, not an obstacle. It mm. is only meant for us to be up on our toes mm. and really delivering on our mandate. Mm and really making a difference in the lives of our people, mm -hmm. that they can feel it, that government uh, presence is really palpable, mm -hmm. it's evident, mm -hmm. uh, and that this also hopefully, and not just hopefully, but certainly add to the public's uh, trust and confidence in the leadership of uh, President Duterte. Mm -hmm. Okay, Secretary, thank you so much for joining it's us. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, I'm Janelle Paris. this has been Rappler Talk. Thank you.